My name is Bryony Pearce and I'm the Research Director for Marine Ecological Surveys. We're quite unique within the field of environmental consultancies because we, at least a third of our work comes from applied research um, and my job is to organise that part of our business. So I'm in charge of getting funding in to do research and coming up with ideas and identifying areas where research is needed. Um, so the commercial side of the business um, works primarily on environmental impact assessments and the reason that we need these is because as humans we use the sea for a variety of different activities including fishing um, to supply building materials um, for ports and shipping and all of these activities have an impact on the environment so what our job is is to go in and assess what impacts those are likely to have and as far as we can to mitigate against them. Um, I was lead biologist on the South Coast REC, um, so I was responsible for the ecological assessment of the South Coast area. Um, MES carried out the survey work for that and collected all of the samples. We analysed them here in our Benthic laboratory um, and then I did the statistical analysis on the data and then I work, working with CFAS and British Geological Surveys we produced the integrated map of the area. Uh, the REC programme was designed to provide regional maps of the sea floor. This will include maps of the sediment type, um, the biological communities, so different animals, the distribution of rare species, um, and also archaeological features. And the way that these maps will be used in the future is to inform marine planning. Um, so marine planning is a process by which um, government decides which areas are a priority for which activities. So that might be conservation, or it might be fishing, or it might be a wind farm. And all of these activities have conflicting needs, um, and by mapping the resources that are there, it allows us to plan these activities so that they have a minimal impact on the environment. Certain marine habitats have been identified as particu being particularly important for conservation, and this can be for a number of reasons. Um, usually it's because they're particularly rare, it may not be rare in the UK but they may be rare in a European context um, and the other primary reason is that they support a high biodiversity of other marine life um, and these have been identified under the Habitats Directive which is an EU directive um, under Annex 1 which is a list of habitats which are particularly important for conservation. Um, so the three most common Annex 1 habitats that we find offshore in the UK are sandbanks, rocky reefs and biogenic reefs and these were found in the RECs. Examples of biogenic reef included the Ross worm, Sabellaria spinulosa and also mussel beds, Mytilus edulis. Um, and rocky reefs is basically anything where there's rock protruding through the seabed um, and these areas support particularly um, biodiverse communities including sponges and bryozoans and hydroids um, and then the other habitat is sandbanks and these are particularly important because they provide a habitat for sand eels which are a very important component of marine food webs. A biotope is made up of two components the biological community and the physical environment which in which the biological community exists. Um, these are classified using um, environmental parameters such as the sediments on the seafloor, um, the amount of energy in the system, so that might be waves or tides, and then also the amount of sunlight getting to the animals on the seabed. Uh, so in the intertidal zone, there's sunlight which reaches the seabed and you get green algae, and as you move deeper you get red and brown algae, and then those disappear where there's no sun reaching the seafloor. So that all of those different components make up a biotope. Within the REC projects, we use the UNIS habitat classification scheme in order to classify our biotopes. This scheme was developed by the European Environment Agency and is a hierarchical classification scheme. Uh, the system starts off splitting between marine habitats and terrestrial habitats, and then the marine habitats are split further using um, physical environmental factors such as depth, sediment type, um, and the amount of light reaching the seafloor. Because we're quite limited in the data we can collect in the marine environment, we've started modelling marine biotopes. Um, because biotope classification schemes are hierarchical, this allows us to take modelled environmental data as the base of our model, 
Um, so we use oceanographic model, which model the routes of waves and tides, and we combine these with sediment maps, which have been um, created using sample data, but give a continuous layer, continuous map of the sediments on the seafloor. We combine these layers all together um, to give a description of the physical biotopes. And once we've described the physical biotopes, we can then take our point data, which gives us information on the biological communities, and we can see where these occur most regularly. And we can then extrapolate that data to produce a combined um, biotope map of the seafloor. One of the most interesting findings of the South Coast REC was some black bream nests. We already knew that black bream nests exist in the area, but we only had one record of them. Um, we now have several records and we can now have a fairly accurate picture of their distribution. Uh, black bream are quite an interesting fish. They move inshore in the spring to nest and the males choose a nesting area, which is usually um, gravel over a hard surface. And the males will flick the gravel off the hard surface to, to create a, a depression in the seafloor, a circular depression, which is about one to two metres in diameter and about 30 centimetres deep. And we picked up these um, depressions using side scan sonar, which is an acoustic um, descriptor of the sea floor. So this has allowed us to map the distribution of black broom nesting sites. And these have now been submitted um, as a proposal for protection and are likely to form a component of a marine protected area in the future so that this resource isn't damaged by fishing activities.